Hi guys, Adam Young here. I have a little bit of time in between lessons and I thought I might practice myself. And so I thought, well, why not just stick the camera on and actually go through it live? So it's not quite live, you know, I'm gonna be editing it out a little bit, but I thought that this is something that I would have liked to have seen. I don't know if there are many YouTubers doing this or, or many pros doing this. And I thought that, you know, keep this low edited, really kind of informal and I can talk about different aspects of what's happening. You know, what I'm thinking of, it's not just about the movement as I constantly reiterate to everybody, it's about what's going on in someone's brain, how they're adapting to what's happening on the day. So I thought it'd be cool if I just do a warm up, do a practice session and go through it all. So I will start with some wedge shots. This one is set up at 60 yards. So for me, a 60 yard shot is halfway back with the lead arm and go through at a normal pace, not aggressive, not easy. It's pretty normal. So that felt pretty good to me. That's gonna be quite close. All right, a little bit farther than normal. I have uh, a great setup here, as you can see. I've got the GC quad there. Uh, I've got uh, an iPad Pro down on the bottom here, and I can see everything I need. So that was six millimeters out of the heel. Nothing to worry about. Not shank range. So I haven't done any physical warm up yet. That's a pretty bad shot actually, way too long. Normally I actually have a tendency to hit these 60 yard shots short. So yeah, you know, I'm looking at certain things. I'm looking at what was the club face angle on that one. So the club face was 1.2 degrees closed. That might have accounted for uh, the ball going a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna open the face out a touch. Still a tiny bit left, nothing, nothing to write home about though. That's more than, more than accurate enough side to side. A little bit on the long side again. So again, strike, strike was centered, touched low on the face, but that's okay. You don't want it high up on the face with a wedge. We want to hit it slightly low on the face. That was not a very good strike. That was really toey. So maybe a one off. You know, as I'm talking through these shots, it's harder to keep my concentration on certain things, but that, that's my excuse anyway. So yeah, I'm just monitoring certain things like the strike on the face, whether it's high or low. That will indicate a lot as to whether I've struck it fat or thin. If it's too high on the face, that indicates a fat shot. Maybe I'm hitting the ground early or certainly would be a fat shot on real turf and low on the face is okay, especially with a wedge. So, you know, that one was 12 millimeters low, but that felt pretty good to me. And you can see on the graphic here, that that's, that wouldn't be classed as a low shot. Ooh, that was a good one. So, you know, the first few shots, I'm just kind of getting dialed in. I'm just feeling the strikeout for the day. I'm not worried too much about the result. I think people panic, they, they jump straight to the driver and then wonder why they're not hitting it well. I like to ease into a practice session. Felt like a short swing there. And I unconsciously, I added a little bit more acceleration. So that's an interesting thing as well. It's, it wasn't a conscious thing that, you know, I, I took it back, it felt shorter on the backswing. And so somewhere unconsciously, I added acceleration to get it there. And so you hear about pros talking about saving it. That was not a very good shot. <laughs> but you know, saving it, I do believe in it to a certain extent. I don't think it's a conscious thing. As I said, it wasn't with me. I don't think you can do it down at the bottom, you know, when you see slow-mos of impact and a pro will or the club will close, usually from gear effect, and the commentator will say, oh, he saved it at the last moment. That doesn't happen. But certainly in the backswing, say you make something in the backswing uh, that feels off, I have felt saving mechanisms. And I put that a lot of that down to the type of practice that I do, differential and variability. So I'm always practicing variations of different shots, as I'll show you a little later on. So a good shot here of 60 yards, I've got them written down here. So 50 to 70 yard shots, the average on tour is about 16 feet. 
to put it into perspective, that was nine foot seven inches to the pin. So that was better than a tour level shot. And it wasn't amazing, but it just goes to show that, you know, I think we expect a lot of ourselves as amateurs and knowing the stats really helps lower those expectations. That should be good. Get up. All right, it's gonna be pretty good. It felt a tiny bit low on the face, nothing, nothing to write home about. 10 millimeters low, that's, that's fine. Four millimeters out of the heel. The face was good because the ball went on target. Actually, the face was a couple of degrees open. That's all right with a wedge though, you want that just to increase the stopping power. So I've kind of reached my limit here. That was three foot away from the, the flag. I've kind of grooved this one in. Again, it is very difficult to actually talk through these things and, uh, and keep your performance going. And that one there, that was 18 feet away. So that one looked very short. Lots of people would say that's a bad shot. That was 18 feet away. And yet I'm looking at my stats here and it says the pros average 16 feet away. So that was just two feet away from being a tall average shot. And if I go into my computer here, I can actually look at the stats and I can see that for myself there, the average is 14 feet and eight inches away. So again, slightly better than tour average. There's one really bad one in there, the 11 yards to the pin, um, but 14 feet eight, I'm okay with that. You know, 16, 60 yard shot is pretty difficult. So my next one I like to go to in the warm up process I've got, I felt out the strike now. I've gone to a 100 yard shot. So for me, this is a 54 yard, uh, sorry, a 54 degree wedge. And so same as what I use for the, the 60 yard shot, I just have to hit this full out. And bear in mind, I'm not warmed up here. So I'd imagine the first couple are gonna go quite short. Oh yeah, my body, my body does not feel warmed up there. Actually, that's gone long. It's a pretty good shot, pretty little left, long, surprised me. Although they usually go hand in hand, right? If you close the face down and that face was three degrees close to the path. When you close the face down, you usually tend to go long and left. Strike was pretty decent on that. Oh, 10, 10 millimeters from the toe actually. So, all right, I'll make a note of that. Felt toey again. That might come up a little short. Oh, maybe I'm more powerful today. That first swing though felt really bad. Just, just to put this into perspective, guys, I'm 36. I'm reasonably athletic. I work out a lot, or at least I did pre-COVID. Um, and still, it takes, it'll take me about 10 full swings like that before I even feel like I can go after a shot. So, pretty stock. 54 wedge, that was 11 millimeters from the toe. Have a look at the graphic there as well. 11 millimeters sounds like a lot, it's really not, but I did feel that. It's enough for me as a pro to warrant a change. That one definitely felt more towards the heel, and that was an intentional thing. You know, my last two, my previous two had been more towards the toe, so I tried to hit that more towards the heel, and yeah, it was zero zero right on the sweet spot so i was right more towards the heel zero is certainly more towards the heel than 10 millimeters on the toe and i actually haven't been looking at the direction here i'm literally just focusing on the strike quality right now maybe a little toey tiny bit high on the face nothing too bad you know that wouldn't have been a bad shot on the on the course either on real turf it didn't give me my strike on that one. It didn't measure it. Sometimes it doesn't capture it, but great shot. I mean, four, four foot seven inches to the pin. From a hundred yards away, the tour pros average 18 feet away. So that, that is what I would be looking to beat. Beat the tour pros, but you're just a lowly teaching professional, Adam. Well, that is right. I mean, when you are practicing, especially when you're in block practice mode like this, I mean, this is an easy form of practice. So I would expect, at my level at least, to, to be similar, if not beating the pros. 
because obviously when you put yourself in a real scenario pressure the pin is off in different distances um, you've got wind to contend with I mean these are perfect scenarios so I would expect to beat that 18 foot average that the pros have however I don't mind if I don't <laughs> because it's okay you know you it helps me with my expectations so for example if I hit one to 12 feet like that I'm happy with that I'm I'm ecstatic you can see me jumping around um, but if I knock, if I hit a bad one, I just dust it off. You know, as long as the average is pretty good. So I'm starting to get loosened up now. I'm starting to feel my body a little bit more, a little bit warmer. I haven't gone after anything yet. That will come in a moment. So that was 10 feet eight. I'm gonna actually leave on a high with the 100 yard shot. I'm gonna look at these stats here. And let's have a look at the table. So looking at these stats here, I'm looking at things like spin rate, 10,000 RPMs. Not that I, I changed that too much. I'm looking at how offline it was. So one yard left on average, which is nothing to worry about. There's a two yard standard deviation. Again, anything within five is really good there. The average was 13 feet away or 12 foot seven, which beats the tour average of 18 feet away. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna leave on a high, as I said. I've actually hit it on average 103, which is a little longer than I normally do. So I'm, maybe I'm a little bit more powerful today, I don't know. Okay, so the next one I would go to is an eight iron. Now an eight iron for me, if I'm fully warmed up, is about 165. Yeah, I'm gonna stick it on 165. I don't feel fully warmed up yet, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. I will warm up quickly. I'm doing that because, you know, the wedge was going a little longer earlier, so perhaps I've got a boost of strength today. The main thing that I'm gonna focus on for the first few is strike quality. And I can see just on that last one, it was slightly out of the toe, seven millimeters. Again, looking at the graphic, it's not a big toe shot, but at my level, I want to improve that. Oh, I didn't feel too good. That was the first one that I've really tried to hit hard. It's not a bad shot at all. I mean, what are we looking at? 165, tall pros, average about 28 feet. So that was half of that, that was 13 feet away. So if I can do that over and over again, then we are laughing. Well, I am at least. Nice and straight. It was on the toe though, 10 millimeters. So again, there's a toe pattern there. I have a toe pattern at the moment. I'm sure some of you have seen it in the other videos. I can consciously change it. In fact, I'm gonna try and do that for this, this swing here. So the last one was 10 millimeters off the toe. And just by consciously intending to, I, I actually just try and hit more towards the other side. I just zeroed that out. What a perfect, perfect example. I am a, I am a top pro. <laughs> I'm really good at demonstrating. Um, <laughs> I'm joking if you, th if you think I'm uh, being serious there. I'm just kind of making fun of myself a little bit. But I will try that again. Normally I don't have that level of control, but I'm gonna try and hit a little bit more towards the heel in order to zero out my strike. Felt pretty good to me. If anything, it's gonna be slightly toe side, but nothing bad. I will take that shot every day. Oh, another zero. All right, maybe I am as good as I say. <laughs> um, four millimeters low, that's about right. I'd, in fact, I want it a little bit lower on the face than that. So when it's, when it's higher up on the face, that signifies maybe I hit the ground a little behind. So that might be half an inch behind or so. Again, nothing to worry about. That ball is going 164 carry, so I am more powerful today. Normally it takes me a, a little bit more of a warm up to reach those distances with my A dime. So another couple of shots. I'm gonna try again hitting more towards the heel. And so I would say today, and this is similar to most days, if I'm not consciously attending to my strike 
I will strike a little bit more towards the toe. Again, that was a zero. I've done three in a row, man. <laughs> okay, this isn't, this isn't trickery. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm having to consciously attend there to, to my strike. If I didn't think about my strike, it would be more toe side. Me trying to intend to hit more towards the heel just neutralizes that pattern. So basically, that is the golden rule of golf, right? You take your fault for the day, whatever it is. Mine might be a slight toe shot. You try the opposite to a certain amount. And that could be implementing something mechanically, you know, something that would hit more towards the heel mechanically, um, or just pure intention, just trying to hit a different part of the face. I often use that. Um, so that was five millimeters from the heel. So I've actually overdone it there. And then that's the last part. You're just controlling the dosage then. So you've, you're making an intervention and then you're controlling the dosage of it, how much you intervene. Again, that one, so that's an interesting one. That's gone off to the right. That was 31 and a half feet away, which 28 feet is the tour average. So that was only slightly outside of tour average there. So 30 feet or 28 feet, that is nine yards away from the pin. I think you caught me on a good day, guys. Definitely no need for editing on this one. Get up there, a little bit short, but more than acceptable. 11.5, 11 feet five away. Now for me, as I said, an eight iron is 165. What that means is if I hit it well, it will go about 170. You know, if I'm fully warmed up, striking it really well, 170 will be the max that I get out of it. So I always give myself about a five, maybe seven yard buffer or so on this, this kind of distance of shot to allow for any slight errors. And so if I hit it perfectly, which is gonna be rare, right? We, we never hit it perfectly. Then I'm only gonna be seven yards past, which isn't much. That still puts me in tour range. And if I hit it a little bit thin, maybe a tiny bit toey, then I'm just gonna get closer to the flag. And so I don't think a lot of players think like that. I think they, they, they use their club based on the best yardage they've ever hit with it. And that's just not how pros think. We're always giving ourselves a little bit of a buffer because we know we're not gonna strike it perfectly every time. Although that was another zero on the, on the center of the face, so neither toe nor heel. So I'm just gonna try and swing a little bit harder now. I'm feeling warmed up here. That was a bit more thin than I'd like. Definitely more speed. So that's an example there. Of, I, I haven't struck that very well. Tiny bit out of the toe, six millimeters, but definitely low on the face, 16 millimeters low. You can see on the graphic that's kind of bottom grooves. And yet I still went 162. So I am able to get away with a little sh uh, thin because I'm using a club that's appropriate for me. As opposed to, you know, having to button it to get there again. That shot there, I'm happy with that, as anybody would be. What was it one foot, 11 away from the, the pin? It was on the, slightly on the toe, a little low on the face. That's not too bad. And so, yeah, just give yourself a little bit of a buffer when you're hitting shots. How far can I hit an eight iron? I mean, if I'm, if I'm swinging really hard and hitting it well, an eight iron for me, might go close to 180. I reckon I get easily 175 out of it. I mean, that wasn't a good strike. I'm trying to bust that one. <laughs> For me, that's busting it. And you can see I've flown it. I don't know how far I've flown it. I'll see now. And that wasn't even a good strike. That was 177 carry, almost 180 yards. There, that one felt pretty good. Maybe left the face slightly open on it. So, you know, a really good strike, hitting as hard as I can. Yes, I can get it out there. 
maybe about 180 yards with an 8 iron. Let's give it one more go. High on the face. But you can see I'm starting to spray it out a little bit. I'm sure that if I practice that more often, um, I would be able to control that better. It's 177 carry. But like I said, I, I, so I have the potential to hit this 180, even more if I'm really warmed up, but I don't. It's my 165 club. That's, that's where I produce the best results with dispersion-wise, strike-wise. And so it's not all about whacking it as far as possible, although, you know, some, some would disagree with that at the moment. It's about what speed can you hit at and still control the ball. So I'm gonna delete those last three because they were me trying to whack it further. And you can see the difference there. They are much farther. So I'm gonna delete those and have a look. So my average there was 12.4 feet away, which compared to the tour pros, they averaged 28 feet away from that distance. Now there are a number of things here. It's blocked practice. It's much easier. I'm in perfect conditions. There's no wind to contend with. I don't have to worry about the balance of the golf balls. Um, I don't have to worry about, you know, getting a blade of grass trapped between the face and the ball and having to fly a lie. So it's much easier in this scenario. And plus those stats on the tour, they are relative to the flag, whereas players might be aiming in different places. You know, if the flag is tacked on the left, a player would be silly to aim at that. They might want to aim 10, 15 feet more to the right of that, especially if there's water left. And so lots of the stats don't take that into account. So for example, if I flush a perfect shot with where I'm intending, and I'm intending to hit 15 yards, or sorry, 15 feet right of the flag, if I land exactly on it, that's a perfect shot, but the stats would go down as you missed, you missed the flag by 15 feet. So stats don't take that into account. Pros might be actually a little bit better than the, the stats show, um, but it's a good, it is a good rule of thumb to look at if, if you're trying to compare to the pros. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is go to a six iron. I'm gonna go 185 yards away. Again, what's the maximum distance I can hit a six iron? 195 maybe 200 if I'm busting it but a six iron for me is about 185 on average or most of my shots will finish on target if I if I pick a 185 target so yeah I'm just gonna same thing focus on strike quality at the moment try and hit it a little bit more towards the heel Felt good, swing didn't, I'll be honest, and I think that's important for, for you guys to understand. So there's a good example of, you know, I've struck it well. What was that, four millimeters from the toe, so pretty flush. And it's gone past the pin, it's gone 191 yards of carry. And so if I strike it well, I wanna be a little bit past the pin. That's good strategy. Just trying to repeat it. I think that was a little bit more from the toe. That one, I'll be honest, I didn't consciously attend to the strike there, so that could be why. Actually, I was wrong, it wasn't. It was right on the center. So the reason why that one went right is the face was a little bit open to, uh, it was one degree open to my path. So my path was relatively neutral, just one degree right, and the face was two degrees right, or one degree open to the path. So you can talk about path, sorry, you can talk about face in terms of face to path or face to target. That one felt good. Get down. I think I might be stronger today, you know, guys. Get down. That's okay. That's about right. I struck that pretty well and it's gone a tiny bit past. It's gone 186. So that, that is about right for me, I think. I'm sure if I try and hit it harder, I can get it out there to 190. So that might be a case of on the course, if I did have 190, I might be more inclined to hit a hard six today because I'm striking it reasonably well. This will be a good example. That was a bad strike. I actually hit too high on the face. And so it still, it still went pin high. Now that is partly because these new clubs are so forgiving. 
the GC quad says that was right on the center. You can see it says it, the vertical impact was zero, uh, but I would never want to strike it that high in the face. That is about an inch behind the golf ball. And so that would be a little bit of a fat shot. I probably in real golf, I'd drop off another 10 yards from that. It felt okay. Now I'm noticing these shots are maybe not as an average. They're going a little bit more right. I don't like to see the ball fade at all, really. I like to see a straight or, or if my bad shot occurs, I want to see a slight draw. So I'm monitoring the club face. That club face was half a degree open to the path, almost a full degree open to the target. So not much really, it just goes to show that was 26 feet to the right, which is what, eight yards right? And the club face was just less than a degree open. So it goes to show how tricky this game of golf is. Oh, that felt a horrible swing. There's a lesson for you guys. In my backswing, I felt like that club was all over the place. You probably wouldn't noticed anything on the camera, but it just felt horrible, yet I don't know, maybe it was an unconscious correction or something, but I was still able to put the club on the ball. So I know lots of you guys, you hit a bad shot and you say, oh, my swing felt awful, I need to change it. Look, even when I hit good shots, sometimes the swing feels awful and the reverse can be true as well. Sometimes I can make a swing that feels so fluid and the cl club comes down perfectly in the slot, everything just feels nice and I could hit it 30 yards offline. So it's not all about the, the swing feeling good. It's just about getting it done. Um, so that path was half a degree into out, face was only 0.1 open on that one. So that is why it was only one foot away from the target. <sighs> I think you've caught me on a really good day, day guys. This isn't edited. <laughs> I'm trying to keep any editing out of it. So it looks realistic. That was 18 feet away. Again, from this yardage, 185 yards, 33 feet or 11 yards away from the flag is the tour average. 33 feet. So that was 18 yards, sorry, 18 feet offline, that last one from myself. So that's almost half tour distance away. Okay, left the face open a bit. Again, nothing too bad. It'll tend to go a touch shorter when you leave the face open because there is more spin loft. So that face was three degrees open to the target and maybe one and a half degrees open to the path. And that went around about tour average, 29 feet away. So here you're really looking to keep that face within three degrees either side for a, for a tour average shot, depending upon what the, the path does as well. Nice centered strike though. I noticed that I'm not having to think about the strike now. That was a conscious effort early in my, in my uh, practice routine or warm up, but it's not really conscious now. I'm hitting it quite well today, so actually I don't have to think about it a lot. Now that is rare. I would say for every 100 rounds that I play, I might only have five rounds where I'm not having to think about anything. For the most part, I'm consciously attending to usually one of three variables. And those three variables that I get all of my players to attend to or to, to become aware of are face strike, as I was in the first part of this video. So face strike quality, whether it's toe or heel. Um, ground contact quality, so whether they're hitting fat or thin. Fat is just hitting the ground too early, thin is not hitting the ground at all, or um, too far forwards in some cases, but that's very rare for that to happen. Uh, I can use vertical strike on this, so that was a nice ground contact, nice vertical height on the face. Uh, and then the third variable I'm looking at is club face position. So I tweak my club face position just by tweaking my right hand grip. I go through this more in detail in the accuracy plan, but uh, which is far less waffly than this, by the way. It's much more um, of a structured program. The strike plan and the accuracy plan are both very structured and more to the point than this video, certainly. 
But yeah, I'm just con I'm just tweaking the right hand um, in order to change or affect the club face as a pattern. I let the odd shot slide. And what I mean by that is if I hit one to the right side of the green, I'm not going to jump in and change my swing or my grip based on that one shot. But certainly if there's a pattern of two or three shots that are the same, then I will tweak my right hand grip. And the, the change for me is quite simple. I just put my right hand more under or more this way. I turn it more to the right if I want the ball to go more left and vice versa. That is how I like to hit a shot, a nice little draw to the left. It was 20 feet left of the flag. I mean, obviously I'd want it on closer to or on the flag, but I like to see that nice subtle shape. My path on that one was two degrees in to out. I don't, I don't shoot for zero with the path. It, uh, it doesn't necessarily make you better. It's okay, but it doesn't necessarily make you better. So my path was two degrees in to out and my face was one and a half degrees closed to the path or half a degree right of the target, if that makes sense to you. The type of practice I'm doing, really unrealistic, is called blocked practice. I suppose this is a perfect example of why I am I won't say anti-block practice, anti-block practice, but I mean, look, look at the shots. It's 16 feet away, 16 foot, seven inches away. If I go into the stats here and just bring up the table and you can see I'm 23 feet away on average. Now, if I did that in reality, if I did that in, on the course, I would be the best tall player in the world. The average tall player hits 33 feet away at, at this distance. So for me to be, what was it, 23 feet away or so, that, that would probably put me number one in the world for the, this distance. But clearly I don't do that on the course because on the course there's a gap between the shots. There is a change of club between each shots. Uh, between each shot. You have to do your full routine as well. So you have to stand back, you know, do your practice swing. I don't have the room to do my practice swing here. You have to pick a target. You have to make sure you're lined up correctly. You've got to, you know, get your brain locked into the target and hit the shot. That is actually how I like to practice more because it's much more realistic. And as good a shot as that was, if I were to do 100 shots going through that entire thing, maybe even having spectators there, so sometimes I will practice with a buddy and we'll play for money. When you have all those, um, all those elements in play that represent the real game of golf, then it's called contextual interference because you're increasing context, right? You've got more pressure, you've got a full routine, you've got club changes, you've got target changes. There's an increase in context, but that also interferes. It makes you perform a little bit worse. And so random practice, when you're adding more of those things into play, can make you perform worse, but it's more realistic. And so it's, e it's better for me then to look at my patterns and say, oh, this is the pattern that I'm more likely to produce on the course. Because I can't look at these patterns that I've been producing and say, I'm going to do that on the course because I won't. If I did that on the course, I would be a, a multi-billionaire. So that is why I'm a big fan of random practice when it comes to preparing for tournaments and learning about your shot patterns and looking at what is actually happening with the ball. Why am I doing block practice here? It's fun. <laughs> it is really fun to do block practice. Hey, I love standing there and flushing shots to eight foot, 10 inches from, from this distance. I will stand there and do that all day. It builds my confidence up. But how realistic is it? Well, we just discussed that. So, a couple more shots. Again, it, it is, it's so easy to, to have that last shot and then just make a correction for the next one based on that because no information is lost. I can just say, all right, that last one was, uh, the face was too open. The face was a degree, a degree too open for that one. So then I'll step in, I'll make a subtle correction with my right hand grip. Get left. 
it's all right. It's a little less open that one. So I may need to make a more dramatic change to my grip for the next one. So that last one was, yeah, face is a little bit too open. All right, <laughs> there's a perfect example of it not being edited. All right, I'm gonna try and close the face a little bit more on this next one. Hey, <laughs> I've overdone it. So there we are, perfect. They're not, they're not all pristine shots. So that one, as bad as that is, we can learn a lot from this. As bad as that was, that was 22 yards offline. Now, even with that one thrown in, even with that really bad shot thrown in, if I look at the averages, I'm still averaging 24 foot, 25 feet away. So it's still better than tour average, even with that bad one thrown in. And the pros will do that occasionally as well. The other thing I want you to learn from this is what actually caused that. Well, if you look at the face, the face was four degrees close to the target. In fact, my, my path was very neutral on that one but the face was four degrees close to it. So it only takes four degrees of face closure, less than that actually, three and a half degrees of face closure relative to the path. Sorry, a little bit more. Four degrees, yeah, I was right the first time. Four degrees of face closure, I might have to edit that one out, to produce a pretty bad shot. Now four degrees is nothing. It's, it's almost imperceptible to the eyes. The beauty is we can actually feel these things better. All right, I've hit another bad one. <laughs> Good. I'm glad I'm hitting some bad ones in front of you guys. So that one just felt, I, I know even without looking at it, it was high on the face and toey. I felt it. I felt it felt dead at impact. And we can look at that. Yeah, it was horrendous. <laughs> for me, it was horrendous. Now, it's good for you guys if you are practicing with the face strike, uh, strike or face spray drill and you see a strike like that, and you think it's okay, remember that Adam said that was horrendous. So I'm gonna try and fix the strike now. So for the next one, I'm consciously focusing a little bit more on the heel, a little bit lower on the face. Might have overdone it a little bit on the low part. Get up there. Lots can be learned on that one. So I've, I brought it back down towards the center, tiny bit too low on the face for what I like. Um, but again, it's gone the right distance or very close to the right distance, even though it wasn't a perfect strike. So that's all about club selection. So stop trying to hit your best shots towards the target. Make sure you apply a little bit of a buffer there. So guys, I'm gonna stop there. I, this was completely unscripted. It might be complete babble. <laughs> um, hopefully you got something out of this. I know it was really long. And like I said, hopefully if, if you get anything from it, it is pick a target or pick a club that if you hit it well, it's gonna go a little bit farther than your target. For most players, I would say, 10 yards past their target is good. If you're a pro, you might go as little as five yards past. Obviously that does depend on what is over the back of the green. Is it safe or short? Um, lots of things like that. But don't, if you strike a really good shot, like your lifetime best, and it lands on the flag, that was poor strategy. Uh, the other thing is pros aren't perfect. I was today. <laughs> uh, I was really good, at least at the start. I threw a few bad ones in at the end. Um, but pros aren't perfect. They will hit bad shots. And when they do, it's often been something really small. Like you, you saw how four degrees of face closure whacked it 22 yards to the left. And also as fun as blocked practice is, you know, standing in the same spot, hitting the same shot over and over again, it's a real confidence builder. But in my opinion, it doesn't really show the patterns that you would produce on the course. And it doesn't really represent the game itself. So if you can while practicing, uh, it's certainly if you're training for tournaments, then try and mix things up a little bit. If you're on the range, pick different targets. Um, go, to, go to the right side of the range, then the left side of the range, and every single shot, walk over to your bag, pick a wedge out. Go to the right side of the range, hit a shot. Go back to your bag, pick your driver out, 
shoot down the middle of the range. So you're changing it up constantly. And if you can do it with a playing partner or a practice buddy, uh, not only does it save you money and it saves, uh, saves your body a little bit because you're hitting fewer shots, but that added pressure there of an observer and breaking up your practice, it makes it more realistic. And then the patterns that you produce in that are gonna be more transferable to the golf course. I talked a lot in this video about strike quality and you saw me demonstrate not only the ability to consistently strike the sweet spot, but at one point I was getting five in a row less than a millimeter from the absolute center. And when I did make a mistake, I showed you that I can very quickly rectify this. I teach all of these skills in the strike plan and if you want to learn how to do this yourself, click the link in the description to learn more.